So a couple questions here. How can you tell if someone is nearsighted or farsighted without asking them? Yes. They squint. You could tell by that, absolutely. And if they squint, would they be nearsighted or farsighted? I don't know if I do. I can't see that. Yeah. It, right. If they're squinting, then, um, yeah, they would most likely be nearsighted. Because uh, farsighted people, you'd be holding like a book much closer to your face or something like that. Um, there's another way we can figure this out, though, if you have someone like me with glasses on. If you're looking through my lenses at my face behind those lenses, is there anything that you notice? I'll just kind of turn slightly. You notice anything that might be able to tell you whether I'm nearsighted or farsighted? Well, what about the lens? That's what it would look like if you were farsighted, They're yeah. Smaller. They're smaller. So you can tell by how big a person's eyes look behind their glasses. So you could just write down um, their eyes look bigger or smaller. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the other way you can tell, and I'm looking at myself in the in the camera right now, I can notice it when I turn my head like this. I can see oh, it's all backwards, this is weird. I can see on this side of my lens um, my face is here but behind the lens it's in a little bit and so because that that side of my head is in further than my actual head that means it's like shrinking my head so that's another way to look if you can't tell if their eyes are bigger or smaller look out the out the sides out the corners and see if that person's head is in a little bit at which in which case they'd be nearsighted or out a little bit in which case they'd be farsighted all right, speaking of glasses, I thought it would be kind of interesting because I've had glasses for a long, long time, uh, since I was in first or second grade. And I've kept all my glasses. Would you like to see them? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I have so many glasses. Nice. It's neat to see how the styles have changed. These were elementary school Mr. Hathaway's glasses. Um, I'd pass them around if we didn't have a global pandemic. One thing you'd notice is that they're a lot heavier than glasses today. The reason for that is back then, you had to pick either glass or plastic. And if you picked glass, they didn't scratch as easy. But if you got hit in the face with a football, it could shatter in your eye. Um, plastic, you didn't have to worry about that, but they scratched super easy. So my parents <laughs> went with glass. They, said they thought they'd roll the dice because with as hard as I played at recess, you get in the, hit in the face with people's hands and basketballs and footballs, so they would get scratched real real easy. So I had glass, which is super heavy. Uh, let's see. Yeah, let's see. This is like second grade Mr. Hathaway. I guess my head hasn't grown since then. <laughs> and the it used to be really cool. It had like a jaguar pattern on it. I thought it was really neat. That's why I picked them. But from all the times I got hit in the face, and you can tell the frames are different because that got busted off from playing too hard. Uh, so yeah, that's elementary school, grade school. So now we're in mid-90s here. And that at that time, the style was much bigger glasses, much more round and large. Still glass. Then I got to high school, and the styles got a little bit smaller. And now this is pretty much my exact prescription right now. Oh, from Atlantis? <laughs> I should wear these more often because I can see perfectly fine out of these. So this would be probably the year 2000, 20 years ago. Um, and then college, Mr. Hathaway. This is where the lenses changed. I can tell these are much lighter, so these aren't glass anymore. These are the. This is like the composite material. So that's college. And then my, my next college one, I actually keep at home because they're so thin uh, and they stick on my face so well that I use them when I run instead of my giant ones there. So we're skipping um, 
graduate school, and now this is what I wore the first couple of years I was teaching, I don't miss this style. <laughs> and they always had a hard time staying on. Yep. Right, right. Because they had that kind of rectangular th thing going, yeah. I was never a big fan of these. So, yeah, and then we got these. Any uh, preference? Uh, should I wear the Atlantis ones more often? Yeah. All right, I'll keep. I'll have to keep these out. And I'll wear them the rest of the hour. How's that? <laughs> okay. Boy, they're heavy. Are Are you um like how far can you do your stuff without your glasses, or like can you just not see at all? Uh, let's see. I can if I don't squint. I can probably still make out the titles in each of those little posters on the cabinets there. Just barely, though. They're very, very fuzzy. If I squint, I can read them. But yeah, that's how bad my vision is. But I'm glad to know it hasn't changed. So if you want to bring in your old glasses, old styles, feel free to do that sometime. It might be kind of fun to see. They're bedazzled. you got to bring those in. I have bedazzled glasses and bright yellow bricks. <laughs> awesome. Okay. So that was very educational for you folks at home. Okay, so we got to actually do something uh, scientific today. So let's take a look at worksheet number six. And hopefully you had some time to take a look at that video if you struggled with the front page. Um, as I mentioned before, at the end of that one class, uh, we kind of had to rush through that. We were running short on time. So in one of the other physics classes, I redid the whole video and left more time for that. So if you struggled, feel free to take a look at that video. Any small questions on page one, though? Okay. Page two. Now, you guys, did I, I don't remember for this hour. Did I have time to do the thing where I had the basketball guy here yeah. and the lens and the piece of paper? Okay, good. So 4A, can you tell me what part of the lens are struck by light from the top of the bulb? Top, middle, bottom, or all? Any thoughts? Yes. All? All, that is correct. Because every single part on that lens contributes to that entire image formation, which is the answer to letter B. If I, if I took um, that lens and I smashed it on the table and I took one little bit from that lens, that little bit would make the image form fully on that piece of paper. It would be dimmer because it's just a small bit of that lens focusing that light, but you would still get the entire image from that tiny piece of, of lens. So then letter C, is the entire lens needed to form the image? No, for that same reason. Letter D, if a card is added, which blocks half the lens, in what ways will the image change? What do you think about that? I heard something. I, I couldn't hear it, though. Will, like, half the image be gone? No. Right, yeah, the entire image will still be there. But because you're, you're blocking half the rays, it's going to be half as bright. That's the only difference. Course number five, now if both the card and the lens are removed, what will you see on the screen? Nothing. Because if you just hold a piece of paper up to a light source, you're not going to see that image. You need a lens or you need a pinhole in order for that reproduction to occur on the piece of paper. Okay, on to the fun stuff. Let's take a look at the lens and those light rays, and we'll see how you did here. Overall, how did you feel in terms of comfort with this compared with the curved mirrors? Better or worse? Better? Good. Struggled with nine, that's okay. That's kind of the tricky one, like that one with the curved mirror. Um, and we'll get to that one. I think we'll just do these in, in order here. And uh, 
And that should be pretty good then. So, here is our lens for problem number six. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna draw it coming up like like this. On the actual picture, they have it going below that middle point. We're just gonna ignore that for now. Basically, what you do if it has that middle point is when you get your image, you would ex because that middle point goes a little bit down here. Then when your image forms there, you would extend it up just a little bit. Uh, so nothing nothing too fancy with that. But let's see what we can do here. What is the first light ray that I'm going to send in once I have my focal points drawn in? I heard it, and that is absolutely correct. Parallel. Whether you're dealing with curved mirrors or curved lenses, you are going to send in a parallel light ray first. So let's do that. Here comes our parallel light ray. It hits the lens. Where is that parallel light ray going? Yes. Yeah, you, sorry. <laughs> uh, Madison. Through the focal point. Yep, through the focal point. Sorry, I suppose I should point with my sorry. finger instead of... <laughs> and we are through that focal point. Where am I going to send the next light ray? Yes. Through uh, with the ruler. Oh, um, there's some rulers above the microwave in the back. They're in a little uh, Tupperware container up there behind the glass. So where's the next light ray going to go? Yeah, through the first focal point. Absolutely. So we line it up with our straight edge. It goes straight through that focal point, it hits the lens, and bounces out, going parallel, of course. Which one is this? This is number six. Yeah. Wait, so... I'm here, if we follow the line, it doesn't reach the bottom. Because of focal uh, are you going through the center of curvature, maybe? Are you going through the C? Yeah, no, I'm not. But like, when you hit like this. Let me take a look quick. Maybe we're not looking at the same one. Wait a minute, wait a minute. So, like, if you bring this, like, you know, like this like that, and then go like that, or will it come all the way down here because then it passes, like, doesn't even. No, the only, I mean, mine's just, it's not drawn the exact same as the work. You, for, you got this dress, it's going to hit the lens. This this middle part here is where we're going to draw it down. So this yeah. continuous is going to go here. Okay, so not the bottom. Right. Right. Yep. Yeah, the main thing is that you're going through the focal point. Um, for this one on the worksheet, uh, this line would hit much further up on the lens. I'm just, I can't draw this to scale. I'm not good enough like that to do that. Uh, so yeah, but that's the idea. The light rays come together right there. And because these light rays are originating from the top of our object, the top of that object is going to form down there. So it might look something like this. And you always draw your image so it goes towards the middle. So it would be drawn like this. It would not be drawn going down. Uh, it always has to have something connecting to this middle dotted line. So that would be our image. Is that image real or virtual? Real. It is real because you've got these real light rays coming together and they make that image. Is it upright or inverted? Inverted. inverted. And bigger, smaller, kind of depends on how you drew it. When I did it, it looked smaller. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, that's number six. For the location on this one, I would say that it's um, behind the lens. It's on the opposite side. Honestly, 
if you draw it correctly, I'm not going to pay too much attention to what you write for the location. Uh, it's just however you would you would write that. So you could say it's behind the lens. You could say it's beyond the focal point, um, to the right of the lens. However you want to write that's just fine. Um, number seven is like the same exact problem, except it's a, just a little bit closer. So number seven, you're going to do the exact same thing, and you're going to get the exact same answer. It's just going to be, number seven looked like it was the image was a little bit um, bigger on seven than six. But otherwise, you do the same thing with the same light rays. Further questions on either of those? Okay, let's do number eight. All right, so number eight, we've got our object, and it's rather close to the focal point. It's still to the left of it, but it's much closer than six and seven. So like with the other light rays, we are going to draw in our first light ray going parallel, which hits the lens, and then it goes through the focal point, just like before. And again, this is number eight. The next light ray is going to go through the focal point. I drew it pretty pretty darn close there. <laughs> we'll work with it. Your light ray should hit the lens on the worksheet without having to extend it. Uh, I'm going to have to extend mine just because that's how I drew it. And this is what you do, again, if the light ray would not hit the lens. You extend the lens down until it does encounter it. So here it would hit the uh, lens and then it would go parallel. Wait a minute. Yeah, that's right. So, um, in order to figure out where this image forms, I'd have to continue this light ray a bit further. there this light ray would continue over here and this is the real reason I wanted to go through this problem even though these light rays did the exact same thing in the previous two the image is going to form right there and it will go upwards like that the reason I wanted to show you this is because it just kind of helps you realize that the closer you are to the focal point the larger your object is going to appear to be. Uh, and that's what's happening in this case. If you get real close to that focal point, you're going to see a much larger image than you normally would. Questions on 8? Okay. So 6, 7, and 8 are kind of the easier ones. Now we got to go ahead and do 9, 10, and 11.
All right, so this one is number nine. One of the things to remember about this one is remember how with mirrors, your focal point is exactly between the center of curvature and the mirror. In this case, your focal point is exactly between the center of curvature and your lens. So if you would do the measurements on this side, you would find that your focal point is right underneath where your object is located. And that's one of the things you need to do in order to uh, actually understand this one. This is the trick problem on this worksheet. So if you weren't sure where to go with this one, no worries. The first light ray you can send in is that same parallel focal point light ray. So there's that. The next light ray you can do is, well, I don't know, because focal point is right here. You can't shoot it straight down, and you can't line it up with the focal point. So the only alternative, then, is to use the special scenario for lenses. And the special scenario for lenses is you take a light ray, blast it straight through the middle, and it would continue in a straight line. This is analogous to the one where, for curved mirrors, where if you shot it through the center of curvature, it would bounce straight back. Same thing, same type of thing is true here. If it goes through the exact middle, it's just going to continue in a straight line forever. And that's a good way to check your work. Uh, if drawn correctly on the worksheet, these two light rays would be parallel, meaning they're not going to cross behind the mirror. And if you follow them back, they are not going to cross in front of the mirror. So that means there's no image. And this would come into play uh, because for this type of a lens, if you hold it close enough to something, you see it upright and you see it larger. If you hold it away from something, the object inverts. So this particular scenario would be the spot where that image seems to be flipping from upside down to right side up. So it's a special scenario. It's right on the focal point. You would not see any image at that location. And this is the light ray description of that. But yeah, no worries if, if this one made you struggle. The other two that we're going to do are more important. Number 10 and 11. All right, so here we go with number 10. We've got our converging lens here. And now this is the very first time that we see an object that is in front of the focal point. And so now we got to figure out how to handle this. All right. So the first light ray we're going to send in is the exact same light ray we sent in first for all the other examples. We're going to take a light ray, send it in parallel, and that light ray is going to go, and it's going to hit the lens, and it's going to say, where do I go? And you'll say, you go through the focal point, because that's what a parallel light ray does. So it goes through the focal point like that, and you're halfway home. The next step is the focal point parallel light ray. Now for this picture, because we are in front of the focal point, we can't shoot a light ray through the focal point, otherwise it won't hit the lens. So what we have to do is we have to make a light ray as though it's originating from the focal point, And that light ray would go up at that angle and eventually hit the lens. Now, of course, I emphasize this a bit too much in the picture, but what do we do again if this goes above our lens? Yes. 
you continue the line from the lens up until it would encounter that light ray. And this is something that you'll have plenty of room to do on your, on your worksheet. I ran out a whiteboard, but you get the idea. Eventually this light ray is going to hit that straight line going up, and then it's going to come out going parallel. Um, For the purposes of this example, because to show the rest, I really have to, I'm going to make this a little bit smaller so I can draw it properly. But you can leave yours, obviously, the way it is because it's on the worksheet. So again, I'd be lining it up with the focal point. It would go up like this. It would hit the lens, and it would come out going parallel. And because these two light rays, i got to redraw this one. Parallel, focal point. Because these two light rays are never, ever going to cross, what we do under those conditions is we take the two refracted light rays and we follow them backwards until those light rays cross. They seem to cross somewhere right here. So then that's where our image is going to form. Man, is that a bad straight line or what? <laughs> if I kept that going, it would make a whole circle. But the main idea is that you've got the parallel light ray through the focal point, originating from the focal point and going parallel. Follow them backwards. Where they cross is where the tip of your image forms. And this is a virtual image. It is upright, and it is um, bigger. Questions on number 10. Okay. Finally, number 11. There's our setup. We've got our object in place. We've got to figure out what to do here. So, first light ray is going to come in parallel, as if you didn't know. <laughs> now, normally, if it, if it was the other lens, we would take this light ray and blast it through the vocal point. But this lens doesn't do that. Those are converging lenses. This is a diverging lens. It's going to take light rays that are coming in parallel. It's going to spread them apart. So the same thing's going to happen with this light ray. It's going to get spread apart. So it's going to be going upwards. And because it's coming in parallel, the angle at which it goes upwards will line up exactly with the focal point. That's one light, right? Now for the next light ray, my gut tells me to aim to go through this focal point so that it hits the lens and comes out parallel. Is that correct? No, it comes out. 
it comes out what? <laughs> yeah. So if I would shoot this through the focal point, again, this is a diverging lens. It takes light rays and it spreads them out. So if it's already being spread out a lot here, that lens would make it curve down even more. So going through this focal point gets us nowhere. What we have to do then is we have to take this light ray, aim it at this focal point, then it will come out parallel. So I'm lining it up with the focal point on the far end right now. And if you do that, it comes out parallel. This is like the tricky one. And once again, we've got two light rays that are never ever going to meet. They are going away from each other and they're never going to they're never going to reconcile. So what we do under those conditions is we take these two refracted light rays and we follow them backwards until they cross which we already did for this one, because we lined it up with the focal point. So now we just have to do the same thing for this light ray. And there we go. They cross right there. So that's where our image is going to form. And there it is. Bigger or smaller? Yep. Real or virtual? Upright or inverted? Excellent. Further questions on this homework? Yes. Uh, no, you guys are just going to hang on to these if you turned them in on virtual day. Um, if if you did not do that, then yeah, I can I can take the paper copy. If this is better than what you turned in on the for the homework, no worries. If you completed it, you got full credit. <laughs>